Warlord Britannia is out now and allows you to take a Roman legion and set out to conquer the vast lands of Britain. But a campaign such as this demands planning and organization. And in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to teach you. We'll go through the basics of Warlord Britannia, from establishing your very first camp, to winning your first battle, to managing conquests, and even founding your first full century. This tutorial will set you up for a great campaign, so stick around if you want to arrive in Britain as an experienced Roman legate. This video is sponsored by Dark Matter Games, and I want to direct a very special thanks to them. We don't start out with much in World of Britannia, but a foundation of gold, silver, and a handful of legionaries is all we need to get started. The absolute first thing you want to do is find a suitable spot to make a camp. Since the aim of Warlord is to conquer farms and towns, it's wise to check the map for where the closest farm is, and you do this by clicking Tab and check out the Map section. We see here that a farm is not far off from our starting location, so making our way relatively near is not a bad idea. Once we're halfway there, we can begin to establish our camp. To make sure our troops don't wander about while we fiddle with our own affairs, click R to set their formation to hold. By default, we have nothing equipped. But by clicking 3, we can choose the Build tool, which allows us to place down our camp banner. This banner determines where your camp is, and you can only build, disband your troops, and replenish your inventory of weapons within a certain radius of this banner. Placing it down is as easy as clicking the left mouse button, and now you made your very first Roman army camp. Congratulations! I'm sure Caesar would be proud. But just looking at a banner won't do much. For your army to grow, we'll need tents where they can rest and increase their availability. This means to once again use the build tool, and then if necessary, use the mouse wheel to locate the Contubernium camp. Let's begin by setting up three tents. Each tent provides us with room for four more units, meaning we should make space for 12 legionaries. We'll also put down two chests, which you'll find by scrolling the mouse wheel and placing them down. Chest gives us storage space, which is important for when you need resources to build an even bigger camp. Now, let's disband our troops so we can assign them to different roles. We do this by pressing Tab to open the menu again and choosing Disband. Now we can use the same menu to assign units to various positions. Let's set four of them to the worker job. You can see who's who by their attire, and workers will look much less armored than their soldier counterparts. If we now click 4, we choose the command tool. Command allows us to do various things, such as asking workers to collect timber. We do this by selecting trees for chopping. The workers will abide, and timber will be gathered. Now we can make another tent, which will raise our legion capacity to 16. With the gold we already have, we can recruit legionaries to full capacity, and with our army size increased, it's time to prepare for battle. We assign everyone to the soldier job, and on the same page as with the Spanish Legion, we can also call them back to arms. To get a better overview, let's lead them out of the camp. Right now the Legion is in march formation, so we'll click T to set them in battle mode. There are two ways of managing and upgrading your soldiers. First of all, we pick the command tool again. Then, we can click the left mouse button to open the upgrade menu for a detailed look at each soldier, or we can click the right mouse button for a faster upgrade at a glance. For now, let's click to upgrade the front ranks to male armor. And with that done, we'll choose marching formation and head to our first liberation target. As we're closing in, let's once again set the army to battle positions, and set the formation to hold if it's not already so. The army will assume a position and await the enemy. If you wish, however, you can move the arrow keys to turn your army in their position, should you need a better one. You can additionally click V to turn the marker UI off and on for a more cinematic scene. And now let's approach this farm. Our army is in hold position, which allows them to toss their pila once the enemy nears. Once the ammunition is gone, you can just hold position like a proper Roman legion, or once the battle is underway, click G to let your soldiers charge the enemy and pick off individual units. But you also have a few tricks up your sleeve. The first and most important weapon is your sword and shield, used with the left and right mouse buttons respectively. But there's even more options here. Holding F allows you to toss your very own pila, of which you have two per restock. 
These kill on impact even through enemy shields and are very powerful. Together with the bow, which you enable by clicking 2, there's even more variety. Just remember to aim properly since arrows don't tear through enemy shields. You have quite a few abilities at your disposal then, but they must be used effectively, as finding yourself in the middle of an enemy group with nothing but your basics is a recipe for disaster. Once the battle is won, so is the farm, which now opens up a number of options. This land is now Roman, but we're here for gold and glory, and that means putting down some farmers. Our options concern looting, enslaving, murder, and taxation. All of these impact the unrest system, so even though we want as much daily income as possible, being too harsh will backfire in the long run. For now, let's enslave just a few, and tax them fairly as well, as to not incur too much ill will. Now you can feel proud for romanizing these lands and take a tour of your new territory. The farms not only serve exterior looks, but also have furnished interior environments. So if you ever want to hold a nice last stand, then consider the cozy spot over there by the fireplace. Warlord Britannia offers a number of quests, and by now, a couple of them should have been completed, which means more silver in our coffers. Returning to camp now, we have space and funding for even more. Let's build one more Counterburnium tent and one officer tent. Now our troop capacity is at 21, which is exactly the size of one century. And now we'll get to promotions. Let's open the command tool and choose a legionary. Let's promote this soldier to centurion, which is the highest position of a single century. Then let's choose another, making them a signifier. Now let's fill the remaining officer spots for our first century. If you have any silver left, you can now additionally upgrade the armor of your remaining units to best prepare them for the next fight. And with your first camp established, your first battle won, a farm conquered, and your first century filled, you are now ready to continue your journey in World of Britannia. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and walkthrough of the first steps in this harsh land, and that you leave a like and a comment down below. World of Britannia is out now on Steam, and if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or check out Warlord's own Discord server. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!